previously on Unfinished Business. We're moving on from the 2018 Queensland Under-20 1500 final to the final race of the 2018 Vic Milers Club season where I knew it was going to be my final chance to achieve that 348 1500 World Junior Qualifier. Fogdog took you on his journey to Melbourne, where he went with the goal of achieving the 348 World Junior 1500 meter qualifier. Looking for big times, there's one looking for a World Junior qualifier, and Marantelli is the first pacemaker. He's going to the outside. Buckingham, Potter, Tobin White, Cashin, Guinea's up there, Fogg's up there, Bice is still there as well. After finding himself in a great position early in the race, Fogdog got tired and faded towards the middle of the pack but managed to hang on and finish well for a win and a World Junior Qualifier. Looks like Fogg's moved in. He's one of the guys going for the World Junior Qualifier, so Fogg's putting himself in position there. So as they stretch, it looks like Fogg's going to move into the lead potentially here. So Fogg's got the lead here. Tobin White coming strong. 447, it looks like Fogg's got his qualifier. All right, so obviously that race probably couldn't have gone any better at all. I got the World Junior Qualifier and got the win. Welcome back to episode 5 of Unfinished Business. For those of you who saw the preview for episode 5 of Unfinished Business on last week's episode, you'll have seen that we're moving on from the final race of the 2018 Vic Milers Club season, where I got a 1500 meter World Junior Qualifier to the 2018 Australian Junior Athletics Championships that were being held in Sydney as the selection trials for the World Under 20 Championships that were being held in Finland in mid-2018. So for those of you who saw last week's episode, you'll have seen that in early March 2018, I flew down to Melbourne with my dad and I ran in the top 1500 meter race at the Vic Milers Club final meet of the season. I knew that this race in Melbourne was my final chance to achieve that 348 World Junior Qualifier and when I went down, I knew that I was definitely capable of running it, but I definitely didn't expect to win the race and get the time. So in Melbourne on the night, I ended up running 347.75, got the World Junior Qualifier and got the win going into nationals, which gave me a big confidence boost before heading to Sydney about a week and a half later for the 2018 Australian Junior Athletics Championships. So again, as I mentioned in last week's episode, my time that I ran in Melbourne, my World Junior Qualifier, put me second on the rankings going into nationals behind Jackson Sharp. So going into nationals, three of us had World Junior Qualifiers, Jackson Sharp, me, and Callum Davies. And to make World Juniors, you had to have a qualifying time, and then they could only take two people from nationals. So essentially, before going into nationals, if you're aiming to make the World Junior team, you definitely want to have that qualifying time, and then you want to make sure you do as well as you can at the national championships. If you win the national championships and you have a qualifier, you're guaranteed to make the Australian team for the World Junior Championships. And then if you have a qualifier but you don't win, it's kind of then up to the selectors to pick the second person for the team who has a qualifier, kind of based on their performance. So if you have a World Junior qualifier but you don't win nationals and get that automatic qualification spot, you want to make sure you do as well as you can and finish as far up the field as possible in order to kind of give yourself the best chance of taking that second spot and kind of getting the attention from the selectors and showing them that you can kind of perform and make that World Junior team. When I arrived in Sydney, I found out that there were 26 guys in the under 20, 1500 and only three of us had World Junior qualifiers, as I mentioned. 
And so I knew that if I could really run well and put myself right up there, I definitely had a good chance of making that world junior team. On the day of my heat, I found out that I was in heat two of two. So they split the 26 guys into two heats of 13. And in order to make the final, you had to place either in the top four in your heat. Top four was guaranteed to make the final. And then if you weren't in that top four, you had to be in the next four fastest times. So basically from the two heats, they took the top four automatically. And then if you weren't in the top four in your heat, but you had one of the next four fastest qualifying times, you would get into the final. So in my heat, I had Callum Davies, who was one of the other qualified athletes for the World Junior Championships. So me and him, both from Queensland, went into that heat and we saw the first heat go. Josh Tawley won that heat in 352. And so we knew that we were gonna have to run quite fast if we weren't in that top four in our heat in order to just make the final. So seeing that first heat go did make me slightly nervous as I really didn't wanna to have to kind of overexert myself in my heat. I didn't wanna to have to work too hard or run too fast just in order to make the final but I was definitely there to do my best and really wanted to be in that final, so I was gonna do whatever it took to be there. So without further ado, this is my 1500 meter heat from the 2018 Australian Junior Athletics Championships. Remember, going into this, the top four in each heat make the final, and if you're not in the top four, you have to be in the next four fastest qualifying times from your heat in order to make that final. Starlies for this race. Jeez. Jared Clifford, MJ Jansen, Van Rensburg, Edward Baishka, Adam Fogg, Lachlan Cowley, Ethan Anthony, Sam Hyde Smith, Isaiah Pretty, Theo Quax, Kang Nyok, Callum Davies, Finbar Warren, and Maxwell Sperling. Now, two athletes in this event do have world under 20 qualifiers. It is Fogg out in front, and Davies on the outside. And Davies' twin brother, well, not really twin brother, but he does look very close to Jared Clifford. They're almost identical at the moment, so don't be surprised if they get mixed up. Isaiah Pretty has a 344 to his name, which is very, very quick. And Theo Quax, the son of Dick Quax, if anyone's a New Zealand distance running aficionado. Dick Quax, silver in the 1976 Olympics in the 5,000 metres and silver in the 1970 Edinburgh Commonwealth Games in the 1,500 metres. So his father, an amazing runner, and looks like he's taking two maybe the shorter distances at the moment and that's isaiah pretty just sitting in second place off the shoulder of fog lachlan cowley out in front now now this race has started to settle now but there was a bit of Arjun Bhaji to stay, start that one. Yeah, it's, again, these guys know the positions they do need to be in, and no one wants to get stuck like they just saw Jackson Sharp get stuck on the rails and, you know, have to, having to move around. Gone through 213.57 for that first 800 metres. Pace is starting to heat up. The New Zealand athlete has taken it upon himself to get out there in the front. That's pretty. He has a seat of 344.34, so handy athlete himself. Jared Clifford from Victoria sitting in there in second. Just letting Pretty take the wind as they come down this front straight into the head. They'll get the bell lap. Now things will start to take off now. That's Pretty out in front. Cowley's still there. 
Now Jared Clifford's moved his way up. Adam Fogg straight to the back. He did a World Junior Qualifier only last weekend at the Vic Myler's meet for taking the win and he's found himself in a tough position. He doesn't mind leading from the front. As you can see, Edward Beischer as well moving up. MJ Jansen van Rensburg now. Normally a steeplechase, but he's up there more pushing and shoving. And this is going to be very, very interesting. It could be a New Zealand 1-2 at the moment. Quack's coming up on the outside, but that is pretty. It looks like he's in the white Waikato. Oh. Someone's gone down. There is a bit of tumbling around there. That could have been... That's Callum Davies. Callum Davies with a World Junior Qualifier athlete. Clifford, Fogg, Bashka, and Pretty. It's going to be a 1, 2, 3, 4. But I think we might hear about this a little bit later. Callum Davies. He's got a 3.47 to his name. He's got a World Junior Qualifier. And we might wait and see what happened there. I think there could be a little bit before we get an official result on this race. We'll have to wait and see. He's done the right thing. He's finished off the race, so he hasn't been disqualified for not finishing. So he can, if anything goes in, he can be reinstated into the final. That's correct. Should you do need to finish. Deem that appropriate. All right, so that was obviously a very action-packed heat. There were people falling over and being tripped, but in the end, I did what I had to. I came fourth and got that automatic qualifying position for the final. I ran 357.54, and in the end, it ended up being quite comfortable. I knew that I was gonna get through, so I just relaxed down that home straight. Obviously, going into the last lap, I was a long way back, and it definitely didn't look like I was gonna make the final but I actually ended up running the fastest last lap of anyone in the heats. I ran a 56.05 final 400 to run 357 and qualify for the final. All right, so obviously that race was very pushy. As I mentioned, people were falling over and one person actually got tripped during the race because it was so pushy and people were kind of bumping into each other all over the place. And the person who actually got tripped and fell down onto the track was Callum Davies, one of the other World Junior Qualified athletes going into nationals. So he got up and jogged around the bend and into the home straight. And he ran a 4.13 for the 1500. So obviously with that time, he wasn't going to qualify for the final. And immediately, understandably, he went and put in a protest to say, essentially, he would have made the final and he didn't want kind of his world junior dream to be cut short because he got tripped by someone else in the race. So we didn't know the result of that process and that afternoon I went back to the hotel with dad and had a huge kind of boost in my confidence because I thought the longer it went on the more likely it was that I was going to be in a national final as one of two world junior qualified athletes and two would make the team. So if Callum wasn't in the final, I was thinking I'd definitely have a good chance of making that World Junior team. And then later on that afternoon, Callum texted me and said that his protest had been successful and that he was actually going to be running in the final. So immediately I kind of got a bit worried and it made me quite nervous because all of a sudden there were then three of us in the final with World Junior qualifiers again. And so with only two being able to make the team, I thought it was going to be tough again, especially after kind of having that big confidence boost, thinking I'd go into the final as one of two people with a qualifier. All right, so anyway, the national final was actually the next day, so we didn't get a recovery day or anything. We had our heat and then the following day, the national final. So that night, I went back to the hotel with my dad. I did plenty of recovery stuff, got my body kind of ready for the final ate well and got to bed nice and early, ready for the national under 20, 1500 meters final. So without further ado, this is the 2018 Australian under 20, 1500 meters final. There's three of us in the field with qualifiers. Jackson Sharp from Sydney, who will be wearing a blue singlet in the final. And then me and Callum, after Callum got reinstated back into the final after being tripped in his heat. And we are both from Queensland. Callum Davies, the other qualified athlete. 347.49. 347.89. Adam Fogg, 347.75. So the boy is getting out there nice and quickly. Tawley out in front has one of the fastest times overall in this event. As we see, Jackson Sharp right to the back, clipping some handles. And Tawley, he's got a 10,000 metre world 
under 20 qualifying. He was second in the, in the 5K the other day. So he's already run 6.5Ks this weekend, which is a big deal. Yeah, I, and I think, I know it's just starting out, but I think this is going to be possibly the race of the championships. It this is going to be. be an absolute cracker here. And as you see there, Tawley, he knows no other way. He goes to the front, he does the work, and he grinds it out. Now, we can't discount Jared Clifford, the T13 athlete, so visually impaired, was a bronze medalist at the IPC World Championships only last year in the T13 1500 metres. That's him wearing hip number five at the back of the pack at the moment, but I don't think they should let Tawley get such a big gap here. Yeah. I mean, this is very silly. This is an interesting one here by the rest of the field, but Tawley's pace is on at the moment. He's really going through it. He's gone through, what, 113 through 500 so far. Really starting to, to move on and open up this gap between. This is a brave, brave move. I know he likes to do it from the front, but 10 metres out in front of the rest of the field, that's another thing. He ran a 345.54 uh, almost this time in 2017. So on this track in February 2017. So he's got the pedigree to do it. 348's the world junior qualifying time and these guys are going quick always got to watch these jabs from the girls out here uh, maybe taking a run off and have had a few issues where they've had to duck under some jabs sometimes so it is a bit of an issue but they're going through the first 800 meters just to tick over two minutes 20175 and uh, he's opening up the pace there Edward Bajka moving up into the front of the lead pack and uh, our Commonwealth, uh, sorry, our world under 20 qualified athletes, just not in the race at the moment. No, but I can sense the pack starting to build here. They're starting to swarm together. They're starting to come at Tawley here. They're reducing the gap ever so slightly. It's going to be interesting to see if Tawley can hold on here. As you see the pack come around the bend, they're swarming on him here. Clifford starts to move himself up to the back of that pack. We've got Sharp, we've got Davies, the added athlete from that, those heats. Tawley's still in the lead as they come in to receive the bell lap. He's got about three metres on the rest of the field. He's starting to tie out. We've lost Jackson Sharp. I can't see him anywhere on the field at the moment. That was the fastest in the in the event here. So we've lost our fastest qualifier. Bajka's there, Callum Davies is up there as well, as well as Isaiah Pretty and Zachary Faccioni. And they go to make a move all the way 300 metres to go. It is Edward Bajka from Victoria. He's made his kick. 270 out. Callum Davies is still there. Here comes Jared Clifford all the way from the back of the pack up the inside. Callum Davies on the outside. Tall has found another leg. It's Callum Davies and Clifford. In third and fourth, Faccioni is there as well as Pretty Tawley. Moves again. He's coming around on the outside. This is going to come down to a sprint finish. That's Davies in the Queensland singlet. And as he enters the home straight, it's six across. It's Davies, Clifford, Tawley and Bajka have knocked up legs. Jared Clifford out in front. Pretty's coming home and here comes Jared Clifford. He's got 20 to go. This is fast. And he's taken the win. Callum Davies in second. Pretty in third. And the third Australian is Zach Faccioni. But the winner, T13 athlete, running with the able bodies. He's taken the win and he's your national champion in the 20s. What a last 400 metres there from Jared Clifford. He was at the back of the pack the whole way around. And as they were coming down the straight to receive the bell lap, he started to move up to that pack that was starting to swarm on Tawley. And he edged his way through. All right, so that was not at all the way I intended for that race to go. I ended up coming seventh out of 13 runners in the final. And I ran 3.55 and the race was won in 3.49. So I was quite a long way back. I wasn't at all happy with it. And I knew that I definitely, 100%, didn't perform to the best of my ability on the day. I had a great run in the heats. I ran the fastest last lap in the heats of anyone running the 1500. And I went into the final feeling really quite nervous. And in the end, I just couldn't get the job done on the day. However, when I finished that national final, I actually still thought I had an outside chance of making that world junior team because I still finished second over the line out of the boys with a world junior qualifier. So of the world junior qualified athletes in the national final, Callum Davies ended up coming second. I was seventh and Jackson Sharp from New South Wales, he actually ended up pulling out during the race. 
So when I finished that race and I knew that I was second of the athletes with a world junior qualifier, I still had a little bit of confidence that I still could be selected for the world junior championships. On the day of the national final, Jared Clifford ended up coming through to take the win in 349, which was an incredible run by him, a great performance. And while everyone was really happy for him and he did a great job out there to win, it was pretty upsetting for me as I knew that literally a week earlier in Melbourne, I'd run faster than he ran in the national final and convincingly beaten him. So I was pretty disappointed, I would say, with how I performed in the national final. And I knew that, obviously I don't want to make excuses, but I knew that I definitely could have and should have done better on the day, but it just didn't go my way. And sometimes that's the way it goes. So anyway, as I mentioned, after I finished second of the athletes with a world junior qualifier in the final, I still had that little bit of confidence of being selected for the team. But unfortunately, this didn't last long at all because as soon as Jared Clifford won the national 1500 final, he put in a late entry to the Sydney Track Classic 1500, which was being held the next night. And it was being set up for Matt Central. It's the Rio 2016 Olympic 1500 Challenge champion and he was wanting to run really fast so it gave Jared the perfect opportunity to go out there and run a fast time and he did just that. He went out and ran a 345, 1500 the day after becoming the national champion and they accepted that as a world junior qualifier and so after winning nationals and then running the world junior qualifier the day after, the selectors saw that as a valid performance and he made the team and then obviously Callum Davies who finished second in the national final also got selected for that second position in the world junior team so unfortunately for me I missed out on making the team but I can honestly still say that I was really happy with how my 2018 season went. At the start of 2018 I had a 1500 PB of 354.25 and I never would have thought that I would come close to making that world junior team and so I was really satisfied and really happy that I brought my PB down from 354.25 to 3 47.75 and that season not only did I take six and a half seconds off my PB but it set me up perfectly for going into my first year as an open athlete. Next week on the Fog Dog Exclusive. Fog Dog answers your questions in part two of the 1000 subscriber special. This is part one of a two-part video and part two is going to be a Q&A so get your questions in. Ask your questions in the comments below or send them to Adam underscore Fog on Instagram. See all of this and more next Thursday, June 11, 7 p.m. Central Time. Only on the Fog Dog Exclusive.